Peace, family. Peace. This is Toss. Oh, wait, hold on. I had to make sure I was recording, family. <laughs> um, th this is Pharaoh Nefertem. And this is Tall Segment University. This is Herbal Hecker. Herbal Hecker. So, this video is probably going to be about two hours long, maybe. It's probably going to be split up into three different parts. And then on top of that, there's going to be um, a lecture number two as well, where I'll talk about more of the formulations and, and, and the different uh, herbal uh, 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 ways to... I'm sorry, the different ways to ingest herbs or take herbs because there the, 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 the are a couple main ones and I'm going to teach you guys how to do it, but 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 that's not in this lecture. This lecture is for the beginning of Herbal Hacker, so let's go into the intro. I'm not the intro. The order of business. One is the intro. Two is what is Hacker. Three is food is medicine because we need to understand that food is medicine be, before we even go into what an herbal function is so that you can understand a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> to, to keep it short, because I'm, I'm gonna get it in, in a second. Five chemical constitution. Ooh, not not constitution. Oh no, not that. <laughs> chemical constituents. Um, the herbal functions, and then the conclusion. Yes, family. Now, when you listen to this, li listen to all my lectures with an open mind. Um, a lot of the stuff that we've been told is not real, not true. So, if you come across anything in here that you don't like. Just realize that you may not like it because you were taught pseudoscience by someone who was trying to colonialize you. <laughs> so, with that being said, let's get it. In the crypto.com. Uh, the intro. My name is Pharaoh Nefertem. I'm an herbalist specializes in nutrition for the African diaspora. I have a degree in electrical engineering and a certificate in nutrition from Harvard. Um, I'm also a dancer, a choreographer. Um, I've done... Um, movies, music videos, blah blah blah, Beyonce, Kanye West, The Rock, etc. etc. Um, I currently stopped doing that because I woke up and I was like, Yeah, this is not it. <laughs> um, so as a as someone who is practicing, or I don't want to say practicing, someone who is you, you utilizing this information on yourself or with others. I created I created a pledge, right? Because with great information comes great responsibility. That's not the quote. Can't remember what the quote was. <laughs> but, but 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 you get what I'm saying. You have to be responsible when doing this because yes, this stuff helps. Yes, you can heal from using this. But it's also possible to cause harm if you're not if you're not knowledgeable enough on the subject, it's all it's possible to cause harm. Also, if you're not using the uh, modality of, of herbal heka with mayat, right? You have to it has to be order. You have to do it with justice. You have to do it with truth and 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 and, and peace and and love. Like you have to actually like give a fuck, right? So the pledge, as a practitioner of herbal heka, I will always hone and study my craft. I will always perform my best. I will practice what I preach. I will do all work according to my art and aim to help the African people all over the world heal. I will teach those who are willing to learn the science of herbal hecka to the best of my ability. I realize that I am a warrior for the African people around the world. Yes, this is important. So, at some point, you, th this pledge... You really need to take this seriously. Not at some point. You need to take it seriously now. Because if you're about to watch this video and then watch the other Herbal Hacker videos and then start getting into plants and trying to heal people, you better take it seriously. <laughs> so with that being said, next. So what is Hacker? Right? I got this uh, from um, Supreme Mathematics because uh, uh, ma mathematics and science and religion and healing is like all one, right? So the book Supreme Mathematics, just because it says mathematics does not mean th that th that is not important for for healing, as I'm about to explain. So what is Hecker? 
Uh, the ability to replicate, model, manipulate, and control various aspects of nature using mathematics. Dang it. <laughs> using mathematics was known to the earliest Africans as Hecker. Hecker is a concept as a concept was used to represent the manipulation of the elements of nature. Hecker is often defined as magic. Magic is defined as the practice of producing a desired effect or result by techniques that enable the humans to control forces of nature. In modern terms, Hecker and magic would be called engineering. Engineering is... <clears throat> excuse me. Okay. Hold on. I'm getting too many, too many notifications. Let's turn this off. Turn that off. Because I'm getting too many notifications. <laughs> Um, in modern terms, HECA and magic would be called engineering. Engineering is defined as the process of acquiring and applying scientific and mathematical knowledge to design and develop inventions that realize a desired objective. When looking at the definitions of engineering, magic, and HECA, the relationship can be seen. And, su and successfully practicing engineering, HECA or magic depends on mathematics. So, HECA, aka magic, aka engineering. It's all the same. This is the ideogram the symbol uh for hecka right there's also the symbol for nine to the ninth power of nine or 100 to the 100 power of 100 but we're not talking about that right now <laughs> this is the, the the symbol so if you see the symbol realize it's hecka aka magic aka engineering or it is also other things too but we're not we're not doing that in this, in this lecture next so now fam we must understand what essential nutrients are. Yes. And, th and this is the, the AKA food uh, is medicine uh, 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 slides. I just forgot to change the title <laughs> from essential nutrients to food is medicine. So please excuse that. <laughs> so food is medicine. What is food? Now, these are all definitions I got from Google. Right. Since we love to use Google so much and love to trust Google so much. This is what Google telling you. Right. Food, any nutrition, any nutritious su substance that people or animals eat or drink, or or that plants absorb in order to maintain life and growth. Okay, any nutritious substance. So what is nutritious? N nutritious is nourishing, efficient as food. Okay, so what is nourishing? Nourishing is containing substances necessary for growth, health, and good condition. Okay, so. Is containing so, so food contains substances necessary for growth, health, and good condition. So, what is necessary? Necessary, required to be done, achieved, or present, needed, essential. Okay, so food, whoops, food is containing substances that are essential. Okay, so what are the essential nutrients? Right? Because we must ask, family, what are these, what is essential for our body? What is necessary for our body? Right? What is the real food? An essential nutrient, and, and this is from Science Daily, yes? An essential nutrient is a nutrient required for normal body function that cannot be synthesized by the body. Okay, so what is synthesized? What does that mean? Like, what in the world does that mean, right? You might ask that question. Well, let's answer it. <laughs> Synthesize. To make something by synthesis, especially chemistry. Okay. So to make something by to make something by synthesis, what is synthesis? Right? What's that? Oh, the production of chemical compounds by reaction from simpler materials. Okay. So an essential nutrient is a nutrient required for normal body function that cannot be synthesized by the body, a.k.a. to make something by synthesis, a.k.a. the production of chemical compounds by reaction from simpler materials, which means that essential nutrients have to be able to be synthesized by the body, meaning it has to be able to produce the chemical on its own. Okay. Makes sense. So, what are these seven essential nutrients? I just Google this. It's not like I'm, I'm doing anything extremely special. Just Googling, doing some research, going a couple layers deeper than most, than most people. Actually, a lot of layers deeper than most people. What are the seven essential nutrients? The seven, the seven main classes of nutrients that the body needs, these are carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins, fiber, 
minerals and water yes okay so these are all necessary and our body are not able to synthesize these by themselves okay now we have to ask a question are any of these the same like are any of these able to be taken out all right now let's look at fiber fiber is a, and this is from harvard fiber is a type of carbohydrate that the body can't digest okay so it's a type of carbohydrate so if you ever google what are the what are the essential nutrients some will say seven and some will say six well that's because fiber is a type of carbohydrate right so in the eyes of some people you won't you won't need to put fiber there because it's a type of carbohydrate but to the masses people don't know that fiber is a carbohydrate so people might think that you might not need fiber even though you do need fiber and people really know that but but someone who doesn't know they'll just they'll just think that oh carbohydrates so bread so sugar right you, you see what i'm saying next okay now we must ask uh what is the body what else is the body not able to synthesize on its own following me what else can the body not synthesize on its own right ha oxygen synthesize okay half of the world's oxygen is produced via phytoplankton photosynthesis the other half is produced via photosynthesis on land by trees shrubs grasses and other plants okay so what this is saying is that and 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 this, and this is from national geographic right so this is not our body is not able to to synthesize oxygen on its own meaning it's not able to create oxygen on its own well at, at, at least in in this current spectrum of light that we're under in this aquarius age in this in pi, pi, pi for the past like six thousand years <laughs> later on i'm sure that we will be able to and probably about 10,000 years from now. But, you know, we're, we're not talking about that. We're talking about right now. Because we're in the now. Right? Stay in the now. Okay. What about vitamin D? Hmm. When your sun is exposed to sunlight, it manufactures vitamin D. Which means that it's not able to do it on its own. It needs an outside source. Yes? So, the, the sun makes vitamin D in your skin. I'm, I'm sorry. Using your skin. So that's oxygen and sunlight, your breath and the fucking sun. Yes. By definition, a food is a substance that nourishes the body, which needs certain essential nutrients. Yes. These nutrients can't be synthesized. So the body must get these nutrients from an outside source. Herbs are able to give you six out of the eight essential nutrients. The last two come from the act of breathing and sunbathing. So six of the of, of the of the essential nutrients: your carbs, your 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 protein, your fats, your your vitamins, your minerals, and there's one more. And then water, right? Those you can get that from herbs, right? Because it and and the reason why and the reason why you can get water from herbs because I know that a lot of y'all thinking, well, how can you get water from herbs? Well, you can get water from herbs if you if you ever if you ever ate celery, if you ever ate an apple. If you ever ate an orange, if you ever ate a grapefruit, it's watery. Watermelon. That's water in the damn name. <laughs> right? For the food that we that we should be eating on a on a daily basis should should mostly be consisted of water. Right? Especially since the body is mostly water. Now, with that being said, there are eight essential nutrients, not seven, not six. Because your breath and the sun are essential to your body they are important in health you must breathe or you'll die in three minutes or you must get the sun i'm sorry and you must get the sun it is necessary yes especially if you have melanin because the sun is sends radio waves which are sound waves and your skin is absorbing the sound waves which means literally that your sun is absorbing information you're literally absorbing sound into your body yes so now we must uh, man my 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 counting is way off this is part seven this one says part six i'm messing up so now we must ask do we really need meat if we're able to get all eight 
essential nutrients not from meat, well, do we need meat, right? What, 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 one of the most common objections to not going plant-based is protein, right? So let's get into it. Protein is a key part of a healthy diet, but sources of protein can vary on how good they are for your health. Most people eat enough protein, but they may not be eating the right kinds. Plant-based protein sources such as beans, lentils, tofu, nuts, and seeds are full of fiber and other nutrients and have little to no saturated fat. Processed meats are high in sodium and often are high in saturated fat, both of which are linked to heart disease. Heart disease. Processed meats also have been linked to cancer. This is from, damn, what source is this? The NIH. A good first step to eating healthier protein sources is to cut down on deli meats, hot dogs, bacon, sausages, and eat more plant-based proteins. In addition to improving your health, replacing animal protein, especially red meat with plant-based protein sources can help our planet's health by reducing greenhouse gas emissions. So not only did, did I just bust the myth of, of, of protein from plants, you can, you can also help what they call climate change, <laughs> which is technically, I guess, climate change because we're going into a new, a new, a new light uh, source. So the planet is going to get hotter because we're going to a new light source. But you can also help the planet because the planet is alive. So if you stop making fucking meat and you just grow plants, nigga, there will be no fucking uh, 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 world hunger. Everybody will have food because it the the amount of space that it takes. To, to raise animals, you can make probably 10 to 20, maybe even 100 more times fucking plants in that same space if you just grow the fucking plants. Like, what the hell? Anyway, next. Now, <clears throat> most people say, well, you know, I don't, I don't want to go plant-based because I'm scared of... of, of, of of, of B12, you know, what about B12? You know, I, I need I need my I need my B vitamins, I need my B12. Well, let's bust that myth too. This abstract is from um, PubMed.gov. Yes? I got a lot of reading to do. <laughs> the usual dietary sources of vitamin B12 are animal-derived foods, although a few plant-based foods contain substantial amounts of B12. Substantial amounts. To prevent B12 deficiency in high-risk populations such as vegetarians, it's necessary to identify plant-derived foods that contain high levels of vitamin B12. A survey of naturally occurring plant-derived food sources with high vitamin B12 su content suggested that dried purple laver with nori, aka nori seaweed, it's a seaweed, is the most suitable vitamin B12 source presently available for vegetarians. Furthermore, Dry purple laver, laver, how do you pronounce that shit, also contains high levels of other nutrients that are lacking in vegetarian diets, such as iron and polyunsaturated fats. Yes? Yes? So I want to hear that shit. <laughs> I want to hear, I need vitamin B12. I need my meat because I need vitamin B12. No, you don't. You don't need meat for vitamin B12. I just told you where to get it. And here's another source from Life Science. New source of vitamin B12 discovered in the ocean. Yes, yes, yes. Researchers have now shown that B12 vitamins in the ocean are produced by archaea, a group of single-cell organisms not only, not only by marine bacteria as previously thought. Okay, well, now we have to ask the question, what is archaea? Where is it found? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> Where in the ocean are archaea? You Google the shit. And this is from the NIH. Like I said, motherfucker, the NIH. <laughs> in the marine environment, archaea habitats are generally limited to shallow or deep sea anaerobic sediments. Right? Shallow or deep sea. Okay, so where do seaweeds grow? Seaweeds often form dense growths on rocky shores or accumulations in shallow water. Where the depth of the water is 50 meters or less. So this is proof. This is proof that B12... It's seaweed. You can get, I'm sorry. Yeah, you can get vitamin B12 from seaweed. So your sea moss, you can get vitamin B12 from sea moss. You following me? Because sea moss is grown in the shallow 
in the shallow by the coral reefs. Actually, it's on the coral reefs. It grows off the coral reefs. That's where it gets most of its nutrients from. Following me? Seaweed. Eat seaweed. Next. We do not need meat to give us our essential nutrients. All we need are herbs, the breath, and the sun. Everything else is null and void. That includes processed foods, meat, salt, sugar, artificial ingredients, chemicals, etc. Our natural state is to be healthy. Most diseases are the byproduct of faulty nutrition. It is like our natural state is health. Everything that has been given to us has been given to us to kill us. During slavery, they made us eat pigs. They made us eat meat. They probably made us eat shit, like little shit. Like they, they made us eat that stuff. That is not a part of our natural diet. It is not. We did not eat no damn meat. We eat vegetables and fruits and water and breathe and the fucking sun. That's all we need. 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 Yes? And don't get us misconstrued because a grain is a type of vegetable because it grows out the fucking ground, nigga. Don't. And I, 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 just, I had to say that because I didn't want to want to come at me and be like, oh, well, what about bread? You can't eat no bread. You eat whole grain, nigga. Because it comes from the fucking ground. Now, you must change your diet. But when you do it, make it a slow change. You you don't want to abruptly change your diet because you can cause your body to go into shock because you've all your whole life you've been eating meat and sugar and salts and blah 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 blah. And you don't eat a lot of vegetables. So if you just like one day just switch to vegetables, your your body's not gonna know how to react to that. You you have you have to make it a slow process. Because it's it's been engraved in your DNA for hundreds and thousands of years to eat shit, but now you have to slowly get out of it. You 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 can't just do it quick. Whew. Next, chemical constitution. I keep saying constitution. Why do I keep saying that? Constituents. Why do I keep doing that? This is not a constitution. Huh. Anyway. <laughs> So, so now we have to ask, what is a chemical con- constituent? In order to ask that, we have to ask what a chemical compound is. Yes? What is a chemical compound? Science Daily. A chemical compound is a chemical substance consisting of two or more differently chem- chemically bonded chemical elements with a fixed ratio determining the composition. For example, water, H2O. Is a compound consisting of two of hydrogen atoms bonded to an oxygen atom, meaning H2O is a chemical compound. Okay, so now what is a chemical constituent? Yes? C- constituent, the definition, is being part of a whole, meaning a part of the, of the chemical compound. You following me? It's a part. So one, one atom, two atoms, like, like half of... The, the, the chemical compound. Those are chemical constituents, a part of the whole, yes? So now, now that we understand or understand what chemical constituents are, we must ask what an active ingredient is. And inactive, to be honest. Now, this comes from the NIH as well. I'm giving you, I give you government sources so you can s- clearly see I'm not fucking you over. <laughs> The active ingredient, menthol and methyl salicylate. Yes? Purpose is topical analgesic, right? Analgesic. I don't know how to pronounce that shit. Fuck it. I don't give a fuck. Because it's not my, nat- this is my, not my native language anyway. It's not none of our native languages. We didn't speak like this. It's a terrible language. Anyway, menthol and menthol salicylate. Yeah, yes? So, let's ask what an active ingredient is. According to the 21 CFR 2103B8, whatever, <laughs> and an active ingredient is any component of a drug product other than the active ingredient. Okay, only active ingredients in the final doses form drug products are in this database. Oh, you, we, anyway, so it's anything that's not an active ingredient. Okay, pretty simple. According to that same thing, actually a little different, but the same, you know, 
An active ingredient is any compound of a drug product intended to furnish pharmacological, phar pharmacological activity or other direct effect in the diagnosis, cure, mitigation, treatment, or prevention of a disease. And, and, and this one is from the FDA. I got this from FDA.gov. Like I said, I'm giving you government websites. I'm not just, I'm not just pulling out shit on my ass. Um, but for the, for the professional disease or the, to affect the structure of any function of the body or humans or other animals. Yes. So the active ingredient, and this is from Icy Hot, is menthol and methylcinocyte, right? And that's its purpose. So where where can we get these active ingredients from? Is there somewhere else that we can get these active ingredients from? Where do they get these chemical constituents com constituents from? Hmm. Menthol salicylate oil of wintergreen or wintergreen oil. Wintergreen. Winter fucking green. This is also from the NIH. <laughs> wintergreen. Okay, what about menthol? A chemical composition of the essential oil from peppermint. Menthol. Peppermint. This is also from the NIH. Yes? So they're telling you that they're taking chemical constitution. Why do I keep saying constitution? Chem <laughs> chemical constituents of plants. They're taking parts of the chemicals of plants and put, making it into a product and then patenting that product. And then selling it back to you when it should be fucking free because it grows out the fucking ground. Peppermint and wintergreen go out the ground. It's free. They're making money off of nature. In a, in, in, by destroying it. Like, what? Bro, chill out. Like, you're doing the most. You're doing too much right now. Like, OD amounts. So, now that we know what chemical constituents are. Oh, wait. Let me just read this first. Chemical constituents found in food give food the ability to create a chemical change in the body which can provide positive slash negative effects to help heal the body with the use of said food now food is medicine food are herbs yes you follow me the food contains six of this of the eight essential nutrients food has chemical compounds in it yes the herbs have chemical compounds in them that can heal you yes they can heal you yes but not only can they heal you, they can actually cause damage if you don't know what you're doing, which is why the pledge in the beginning was important. Because these chemicals are not just random, not, not important stuff. No, these things are useful. But they can also be dangerous if you're not using them right. Yes? Woo. Hold on, family. Let me drink some water. I'm going in. It's really important for us to understand this. <coughs> that plants are literally your medicine. I just proved it to you from the information that they said. Yes? It's important. So, 